Let's color some images using fun, super messy and artsy watercolor technique that I call splatter watercolor technique. Stay tuned! Hello and welcome to Creative Coloring with Iram. I'm revisiting one of my favorite coloring techniques, the splatter watercolor, where I literally add color to the images as splatters and let the water do all the mixing. Of course, in order for this to work, you have to choose colors that if mixed together will create shades that are pleasing to the eyes. I will be using the Garden Delights stem set. I will just be using the outline images from this set. I will prep an A2 watercolor cardstock with anti-static powder. Then I will stamp the images in embossing ink and then cover them with pure embossing powder and heat set. Now if you have stamped all the images on one panel and you will be coloring your flowers and leaves of different colors, I would advise you separate them like I am doing right now. I have applied water to the panel. You can either use a paintbrush to do this or use a fine mister as I am doing right now. I'm using blues and teals today. I love the colors that I've chosen. I've used them several times before and they always look beautiful. The color I will start with is seashore. I will take a bit of it out on my palette and then add splatters of it onto the images. This is up to you how pigmented you want the splatters to be and how much of one color you want to add. I will repeat the same with the lapis lazuli and if you want you can move the pigment with your brush in case you can see some areas that are not covered with the pigment. The areas without the color look fine too after these images are die cut. It adds to the texture and interest but if you love or want full coverage you can definitely move the pigment around. But don't overdo it or the colors will mix and you will end up with one solid shade. To the flower center, I will add cool summer nights pigment. It is a gorgeous color and I will also add splatters of this on the entire flower. And you will see right away that adding the splatters of this pigment, uh, it just changes the whole look of the image because it's so intense and dark. So after I'm done coloring the flowers I will set them aside to air dry. For the leaves I decided to use just the cool summer nights at first but then I also added a bit of seashore. Don't use a heat tool to dry the images otherwise the pigment will mix and won't appear separate as you see in a tie dye effect. It will just appear as one solid look and leave the images to air dry and when they are dry use the coordinating dye to die cut them. Now, as I arranged the floral elements on the grid, I noticed that they all looked uniform. So I took more of the cool summer nights pigment and added that to the leaves to make uh, some of the leaves slightly darker. I didn't do this to all of them. Then I cut a moon rock cardstock, one inch smaller than my card base, and added splatters of black watercolor. Next, I did the flowers on the panel with foam tape. For the leaves, I pinched the tip slightly to add a bit of dimension and then I used liquid adhesive to adhere them. To finish, I added a few sequins and that's it. I have a beautiful artsy simple watercolor card ready. I do enjoy the splatter watercolor technique. It doesn't take a lot of time to color images and they always look um, different, unique. You end up with a uh, unique result each time you follow this technique. If you do try this, don't forget to share your work. Tag Altenew, tag me. Our uh, Instagram handles are in the description. Thank you for watching. Bye. Hello there, did that video just spark your creativity? And do you want more project ideas and inspiration videos too? Well, if you do, please make sure that you subscribe to the Altenew YouTube channel. Also, make sure that you do click that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Thanks so much for watching, bye-bye.